So, when you get the opportunity to go film a fire truck, you take it when it comes available. Mm-hmm. I mean, because who doesn't love fire trucks? Hey, it's Paul from CP Addict out here at the Beach Grove Volunteer Fire Department with their 95 Ford F Super Duty as one of y'all's pretty well new brush trucks for this department, being as it's a new department. Um, I've got Chris. He's their PR slash spokesperson here. He's kind of going to give us a little backstory of the department itself and how it came to be and all that. So, All right. Thanks, Paul. You know, volunteer fire departments, the key word's volunteer, kind of like I got volunteered to be here today. <laughs> but there was a train. At, yeah, there you go. So, But volunteerism is a, is a big thing uh, in the community. And the thing about volunteer fire departments, a lot of people assume that they're being funded at the, at the city level, if you will, yeah. or even the state level. And the thing is, is in the United States, 63% of the fire departments that are in the United States are volunteer fire departments. Right. In the state of Texas, that's 77%, almost 15% more our volunteer fire departments. So for us here in Jasper County, there are several volunteer fire departments that have been established through the years, but there's been a need on this side of the county for us to have right. a fire department ourselves. And being a new startup department and volunteer, money is paper thin. So hence the need for older equipment that's still getting the job done and able to take care of the, the local community and serve serve a purpose. Now. I know this truck personally because it was at East End Volunteer Fire Department, which is about 30 miles or so from here, mm -hmm. roughly, give or mm -hmm. take. And they got it brand new in 1995, and I know that they've used it, and then they donated over to, to y'all. Kind of what's, what's y'all's plan for the truck other than, obviously, as being a fire truck? Well, as we've been able to get other equipment donated to us, there was a big need for a brush truck. And we really had no prospects to, to purchase one or just kind of hope out of the kindness somebody would donate one. Right. So having East End come up to the party and donate this one that they've kept very good shape on. Yeah. That's uh, very mean, good equipment, obviously. So we're very thankful for that. Well, it, being in the volunteer department myself, I understand that like when you can get something, you don't turn anything down. Even if at the particular time you can't per se use it, hence like y'all have got a pretty good size station. You were you were building so later on you could have the room for the need for for everybody and then hence you got the truck later on. So I, I really like to say you know the think tank that goes into VFDs are crucial, right? We've got an yeah. ex uh, fire chief of Jasper that's our fire chief here who knows right all the here. schemes of in and outs of fire departments because the rest of us on the board for the most part are just people that are willing to to devote some time to try to get the the word out and try to help you know. Fill out the paperwork and right. everything to get grants well, and stuff going. That's what a lot of people don't understand, too, is it's not just about getting the big red truck and go the, down the road going, woo, 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 woo. There's a whole lot of backstory that takes to make everything run. It doesn't just happen. It's, yeah, there's certain criteria poof. you have to meet to be qualified for grants, mm -hmm. uh, to get uh, equipment donated to you, that kind of thing. Hence, so it's not just, yeah. you know, Chris and Paul's fire department kind of thing. Well, I mean, East End couldn't just drive down here and go, here's the truck. There has to be a paper trail of where the truck came from because this was originally bought with federal grant money. Correct. And donated to the East End Fire Department. So they can't just say, well, this truck just disappeared. It had to go somewhere. And then thus you come in, uh, you know, uh, being able to get this truck appropriated for this department. Now, uh, I got some of the backstory on this. I was 10 when this truck was bought new. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I wasn't around for the entire story of it, but uh, it was ordered new here in Jasper and delivered to East End as a two-wheel drive truck. And they sent mm. it out and had the four-wheel drive conversion done. And then 
turn it into a fire truck like most people did back then. You pretty much built everything on the truck. Yeah, bolt on. It, right. it wasn't, it didn't show up as this <clears throat> big shiny new truck that here you go, put it in service that took the entire department and the board, like you said, and all the members to put this truck together and, and make it tick. Well, other business people in the other community, right, that either donate certain pieces of equipment or the labor to put all this together. Right. Well, I know in our personal department, we had a truck similar to this that everybody would come down to the fire station on Monday night and would piecemeal the thing together until it turned into a fire truck and could actually run fire calls. Right. So right. this is pretty well similar to what happened with this truck when it was bought, you know. It, and I think the other, the other thing cool about volunteer fire departments in general, and I can speak to Beach Go being, being part of it, is the, the variety of people that come together. It's mm -hmm. one thing to be in this part of town and have the, the people that live in this area want to have a, a fire department in their community. But it's the other people that come in from the surrounding area, including other fire departments, other cities that, that look and say, there's a need here. We want to contribute. Right. Well, it takes, you've got to have leaders. You've got to have uh, command. You've got to have workers, basically. You've got to have somebody that does the paperwork. I mean, it's not just like we said a while ago, you don't just get in and go put the wet stuff on the red stuff and call it a day. Right. It, right. Takes, it takes a whole team yep. to, to be able to go accomplish the end goal at the end of the day. And that's, a saving lives and saving property. Right. So it's just amazing the, uh, how the community comes together with something like that. Both the businesses, uh, the churches that have had some fundraisers for us, things, things like that. Well, I mean, y'all got this piece of land donated to you, you know, Correct. to put a, to put a station on it. Thanks that, to the Cogbill family, you bet. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, it takes, it takes the community to make this all worthwhile. It's taken almost four years to get to this point. Yeah. It's one thing to agree we want to do it, but all the things that go into it. And then we still got, probably three or four more years of acquisitions and other things to make happen to be an optimum. It, and and get response. all your, all your certifications and all your gear and all of you. I mean, there's, there's, it just keeps going and going and going and going. There's yeah. no, there's really no end to it. It's so. the dedication of those that are here for the weekly trainings and the ones that are willing to roll on those trucks. That's where the, the rubber exactly. meets the road, really. Exactly. And that's, you know, and that's kind of, kind of why we wanted to come out is, you know, new department, but you know, you've got some, used is not the right term, uh, loved equipment here <laughs> that is now filling a need in this community, you know, and we as a company deal with these specific trucks. And a lot of people think that they're antiquated and they can't do the job anymore. And y'all are here proving that an invalid response to an older vehicle, because this is, this is still serving the purpose it was built for almost 25 years ago. Exactly. So as know, if it was a new vehicle. Right. And right. I mean, the paint's still shiny on this mm -hmm. thing. And I mean, it's still, everything is still in optimal order. So very much so. Chris, I really appreciate you coming out today. I know it's like middle of the afternoon, middle of the week. My pleasure, you know, Paul. Taking time to come out and, and let us look at the truck, talk to you all about it, get some details on it. We're actually got one of the other fire members here that's going to come in and kind of give us some of the back history on the truck and more of what y'all are going to use it for and kind of Give us a rundown on everything on it, and you bet. And we let us look, let us look at it a little more in depth. So, All right, so again, I have you guys it. here too. Thank as you, well. sir. I appreciate okay. it.
So we appreciate Beach Grove letting us come out and look at their fire truck, interview their guys today, being able to put this on our channel. But as always, it takes money to run these departments. And if anybody feels so inclined to donate some money to their cause, to help fund their equipment, maintenance on the truck, anything like that, this is a little out of the norm for us, but it's, it's for a worthwhile cause. Their address is 10230 FM 777, Jasper, Texas 75951. And if you do send in money, Jamie Gunner, the fire chief here, will send you an autographed picture of himself back in the mail. Stay tuned.